Hey guys, so today I'll be showing you how to take apart and clean your RAP4 T68. Let's get to it. The RAP4 T68 I have here is the Generation 6 model, and it has the hopper modification to it so that I don't have to use the magazine fed rounds. So the first step you always want to do when cleaning a paintball gun is to remove the air canister. So it doesn't explode your face, and you're also going to want to check. Make sure there's no air saved up in your chamber. And of course, I've already moved the paintball rounds. So if you have any in your gun, you would want to do that now as well. And now that that's out of the way, take the mag out. And then we'll start by removing the mag catch right here. And just unscrew it. Now you're going to want to make sure you remember what side the screws came out because they're different si uh, sizes depending on what side they come from. So I'll flip this over. There we go. And then you're going to take these ones out here. Now the nice thing about the T68 is it only uses one Allen wrench to disassemble the entire thing. However, since uh, the internals are a little harder to get to, I'm only going to be doing a very basic cleaning today. So, get these screws out, and I don't know if you can see this, but they are different sizes. So, just remember what side you take them out of, and then you're just going to pull them down, and off that goes. Set that over there. Uh, flip the gun over, and the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the trigger. So, that's pretty simple to do. There's two bolts on it, one right in here. It screws out nicely. And then the other one over here, which my Allen wrench gets in the way a little bit when I go out and screw it, so I have to do it slowly. Right there and there. Alright. Let me adjust, make sure you guys can see this. There you are. So the other bolt I took out is right there. And this is going to take a little bit of time because they're kind of tricky in there. Now I'd also like to add that the gun I have, the tank does not attach to the buttstock. The tank is separate, I remote line mine. But that's not going to affect how you take them apart. There's bolts coming out now. Oh. There it goes, that'll happen. Now uh, it's important to remember that when taking these out, these screws, let me see if I can show you, have a little washer on them. It's important not to lose those. So we'll set that over there. Okay, and now you're gonna wanna take off the carrying handle. Simple unscrewing right here. Does that, they don't need to come all the way off, just enough to get that off of there. Um, I like to take the hopper off too, just less to carry around. Okay, now you are going to want to flip the gun up again. I'll move this over here so you have a better view. And there's three bolts. The one right here has a little washer on the bottom of it, so you're going to want to be careful not to lose that when you take it off. And then the other one right here, just unscrew that and then. There's this one right here. Done deal. And you're going to want to pull. This is the tricky part. You pull the front of the gun up a little bit. So we'll slide it. Oh, my bolts must not be out of the way. There we go. So it slides up to a point where it frees this bar here and then that's free to come off. Now it is important that on the bottom of this it has these two little springs. I don't know if you can see them. And those will sometimes pop up so you just got to watch that. Now your gun will slide off and it's taken apart. <clears throat> uh, if you have a barrel squeegee you want to run that through here and give it a nice cleaning. Alright, sorry about that. Forgot my barrel squeegee. Okay. So this is pretty easy. Uh, when you run them through, I like to run them through this end first, and this detaches, by the way. 
The reason why I do this end first is because this has holes in it. So if you run it through the other end, all the gunk you saved up is just going to be filling those holes. So <clears throat> you grab it out here and just pull it through nice and clean. And then you're going to want to check the barrel. Make sure you did get it clean. And this would be a good time too to run a rag over all the pieces. If there's any paint on them, you just run it down that. Make sure it's all nice and clean. I've already cleaned this gun, so I know it's all clean. Just anywhere you see paint, especially on the internals, paint will affect how your bullet flies. So if you get paint in your barrel, paint where the air is, paint in the lines, it'll mess up how your gun shoots. So now that it's apart, you can really see the clean package that Rat4 makes. And there's the, you know, trigger thing. And um, I'm not going to take this apart just because it's cumbersome and if a ball explodes in the barrel, it won't get into here. So there's really no reason to take it apart. As far as oiling this gun, uh, the only place I'll oil it, and I'll show you right here, is if you take that out. I like to dab a little oil in there, keep this part nice and loose. And when you go to put this back on, you want to do the springs first because they're the most difficult for sure. And when they're on that little piece right in there, you just slide that in and set it there. Now the trigger, pretty simple. You can clean that up. Uh, I don't oil it ever. There's no need really. And just clean this. There's no point of taking this off too because unless it got hit with a round, there's going to be no paint on it if a ball explodes in your barrel. So after all that's done, you're going to want to just line that up. I'm sliding it on a little further than you'll probably want to, but then you're going to take this, turn it upside down, and you want to set it, oh, see, I just dropped the thing out. This is always the harder part. Got to line that back up. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so you see how this has this nice ridge right here? You're going to want to put that over the hopper connection. If yours has that, man, I'm not getting lucky today. All right, there we go. And then slide it out until you feel it fall into place. slides back on. It goes out quite a distance. Um, then you're going to want to screw this back together. And when doing that, I like to start with the one with the washer in the back. You'll notice the difference. It's got a little point on it here. Let me pull the bolts out so you can see. Being a little more difficult than I thought it would be. Alright. So there's one of the normal bolts, and here's the one that the, kind of goes to a point right there. So that's one I like to start with, and it lines it up better for me, I've found. That just goes in the back there, and then you screw it in, no problem. And then you're going to want to drop this one in here, and that one in there. Nice, easy system here. It's nice that they made it easy to take apart. Um, some of the other guns I've had have been really difficult. A lot of little parts, easy to lose stuff. This one's pretty simple. Really like that. However, it probably isn't that simple when you go to take apart the internals here. Um, I haven't tried to do that yet on this gun. It's still a new gun. No need for it, but if that comes up and I have to take it apart, I'll definitely do a video of it. So then this sets on there, just line it up nice. Drop the things in. Remember those washers on these, very important. They keep them in there when you're playing your game, especially these ones because they face straight down. You don't want to lose them. Trigger will drop off while you're trying to shoot your friends. 
Okay. Now these ones are a little tighter, like they take a little more force to go on because of that bolt. It provides a little resistance. So you just wanna adjust for that. Screw this in here. There it is. Trigger should have no wobble whatsoever. And then you can flip it over, slap the carry handle back on. Uh, when you gotta do this, especially if you're like me and have the hopper Thing, you're going to want to make sure it doesn't interfere and you're just trying to line up you see those uh, two little bars you're trying to line those up nicely kind of takes a little bit there we go screw it on nice ta-da alright and then Last but not least, you want to put the magazine feed back on. So, on this one, you see one has a little V right there, and the other's a square. The V points down your gun. And then you just slide it in there. Alright, sorry about that, my camera decided to shut off. Now, back to what I was saying, um, if you forgot what side the little bolts go on, the little bolts go on the side with the wrap four plate and your serial number. So you just drop those in there. Doesn't matter which one you screw on first. Just make sure it's nice and lined up. There it goes. Get them snug. You don't want any of these to be loose because they'll fall off while you're playing, which wouldn't be good. There you go. Then you're going to flip it over and get the longer bolts and drop those in there. There's that one, and this one just goes right in there nicely, there it goes. Okay, now that those are in, your gun is all together. Pretty simple. Flip it over to safety, and then I'll slap the mag back in. There it is, and uh, if you have the hopper one, you can slide that in there as well. Oh, that's not as easy. There it goes. Flip that down, and then I'll put my barrel catch on it. Slide that up there. All right, now what I like to do whenever I put a gun back together is I'll run some air through it, make sure I put everything together nice, it works smoothly, and uh, air will also clean out stuff. I don't usually run paint through it. If you wanna do that, go for it. Other than that, um, thanks for watching my video, and I hope your gun maintenance goes excellent. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks!